Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my precious pack, and welcome back once more to Vega Conflict. Let's go ahead and let's talk about the alien strike for a moment, shall we? It has changed a lot since the launch of Deep Space. First off, these are crafting materials. Well, not specifically crafting materials, they are actually the patterns that we need to craft the upgraded ships for the Xeno Division that everyone within the first 12 days should have. And this is just one of the two rotations. There's one today, which for me is Monday, and there is another on Thursday. So I'm gonna take a look at that one as well. I need to get some content out, and I figure I'd take a look at the revamped Alien Strike and share a few recommendations, because there is actually quite a lot that I would recommend for Kixai well, the development team, and I actually haven't seen any targets list or anything like that, so I can't really say how much the targets are going to pay out either, which is a bit odd. You would have expected some type of updated strike list and things like that with the targets and everything like that, but I don't see anything like that, so... Right off the bat, at the beginning of the video, I'm already going to tell them include a briefing or something on the revamped alien strikes because they have been revamped and they need to be represented appropriately in the information column. Other than that, there is actually a few issues that I have with their store and most of it correlates to pricing and the payout of targets. If it didn't change from what it was when I was working with them, the highest you could get was about 200,000. You had to hit a level 80 harvester to obtain that 200,000. And as you can see, a good majority of the crafting material is going to be at least two and a half harvesters or more. And that isn't exactly ideal. 500,000 for old tech. Granted, these are all completely prepared credit um, patterns and things like that. In this case, this one actually is a credit, so you just need to have a Mark V on hand to be able to craft it. The rest of these, you're going to have to get the rest of the materials, and this is another issue that I see. There are no crafting materials whatsoever. So... Can we possibly get some boxes in here with specifically the credited amounts or the amount of item, the proportions of the item necessary to craft the equivalent level? In this case, I actually think it's the exact same as the higher tiers, however, you rely on a pattern. No, wait, it's not higher tiers, it's the lower tiers. Pardon. But one thing I'm going to recommend is include crafting material boxes here so that along with the patterns you can get the boxes along with the corresponding items you need and the number you need to craft the ships. Other than that, the pricing of the lower levels up to the Punisher Mark V and everything like that, each of them up to Mark V is actually extremely fairly balanced because you can hit a single harvester target and obtain it. However, in comparison to the Mark VI, it's... Why does the price jump up so drastically? Throw a 250 or a 300,000 tag on it, or basically I'd, I would cap it at least 200,000 intel and make it so you just have to have a single harvester for it. So you're not going to be working too hard or pushing your people too far towards farming for tech that Let's face it, when they get into a PvP fight, it's going to be Pharmacon, it's going to crush them into the ground, they're not going to stand a chance. Make it so it's at least easy at the tech that they're going to lose with while they advance. Because it doesn't make much sense to me to lock the Elite credit, which is going to allow them to run for the most part, behind this wall of credits, and I'm positive that if I add up three of them, it's going to be nowhere near 500,000. It's going to be just shy of 400,000, actually. 200,000. Yeah, it's going to be about three, 345,000 
So it's not even 350,000 to completely upgrade them. So why is this 500,000 credits? Literally slap the exact cost of every single one of them. Make it so it is exactly 345,000. That way you just double over what you had to for the additional benefits of increased movement speed and sector and things like that. Cargo capacity as well. It doesn't make sense for it to be such a high price in comparison to the Mark V because, yes, it is a fully crafted credit, but unlike the previous levels, it's not increasing the weight, it's not increasing various other stats, it's just increasing sector speed and cargo. So, consider looking into the price of that. Not even going to mention the access at the top. The reusable credit items, well, not credit items, just the reusable items in general, I don't think they've ever gotten the prices right with any of them, and even now I can see issues with this. First off, you're trying to equip an entire fleet with these, so limiting them to 12 when a single cruiser has four weapon slots, you're only going to be able to equip four of them completely, however you're going to mix them naturally. I need a drink real quick. You're going to mix them naturally, and limiting them is going to hurt, because players may want to experiment with fittings and things like that, and they may need more than 12, or they may need less, so this may be the perfect number for some people, whereas for others, it may not be enough. So I would at least double it and go up to 24, or around 24, to just give a more even number that could be used. Second, again, the pricing is all wrong. Cruisers, once again, have four weapon slots. And this is going to cost more than it's going to... Well, actually, for that one, if you actually use the other one. This is a Xeno weapon, and you can actually use the Axis weapon right here. On your lower tier ship, you can use it since they removed the weapon requirements for them. But again, it's overpriced in comparison to, say, the Disintegrator Cannon. It doesn't have three times the damage per second. It doesn't have three times the range. It doesn't have three times just about anything over its little brother weapon. So the fact that it has a three times price tag, even though it's not that much better, it's it has better damage per second. It's it effectively damages the target much more easily and much more quickly because it's capable of putting out plenty of damage with very little time in between attacks, actually. Unlike the Xeno Disintegrator can, they have a similar firing... similar reload time. But when it comes to the actual burst, the Xeno Pulse Cannon actually fires for a longer time frame than the Xeno Disintegrator Cannon does meaning that the individual rounds are doing more damage because it has better damage per second. But that still doesn't justify, in my eyes, a 600k price tag for just one item. If people need four of them, that's going to be as much as one of the elite credits for a ship that they're going to be working for from a tutorial I'm going to help them make. So, again, that, that doesn't make sense. Look into the prices, really. Just look into the prices, consider revamping them, and build them up around the tech and the player base that is going to be participating in this event. Do not think of high-tier players. Think of mid-tier players that are advancing still. Limiting this tech for them behind a steep price tag isn't a smart idea, especially when the targets they're going to be fighting are going to be hurting them pretty badly due to the repair times that they're going to have with a Guardian fleet to take on the Harvesters backed up by possibly Cutters or whatever they choose to use. But either way, it's going to be repair time. And if they have to hit four Harvesters, because the highest they paid out was 200,000 last time I hit one, that's going to be four targets they have to hit for a single weapon. Unless they hit three and then hit a random low-level target. But they still have to hit three of them for a single item. Again, that doesn't make much sense to me. Go ahead and just think about that for a minute. 
and just take a look at the stats between the two. This is the best for the Xeno, well, the Axis, and this is the, ve the best brought up by the Xeno. Again, just consider what you do in the game and really, really consider changing prices and balancing them based on the tech to tech levels as well as the damage values and things like that. Don't balance them by, by what tier they represent. Balance the prices by the effective increase in stats. In this case, as I stated, it does have superior DPS and it does have a superior firing cycle. However, the damage per second isn't exactly marginally monstrously better, I should say. It's just a soft step up. You're doing more consistent damage instead of burst damage. So, prices need to be looked at, and especially for the drones, because that's just... I'm a little bit disappointed. They were cheaper in the previous strike. How do I know? Because I used to buy them, left and right. I would intentionally do the alien strikes every now and then, just to pick them up for various fittings that I have in store, literally sitting on paladins that I have a bunch of. And I know for a fact they, they weren't a million a pop for a level 3 drone. They're about 250. So, again, just like with the vast majority of other items, Consider your targeted audience and what they're going to be doing. And since you have no previous base value, because Xeno Division doesn't have a carrier, this is going to be Axis only, don't overprice it because that's going to be the carrier that they're going to share between the two factions after they unlock it. And locking most of its, well actually locking its only weapon sets that are extremely good with it behind an extremely steep price tag of let's see it's going to cost you roughly 12 million just rounding it up 12 million intel to fully fit a single mark 3 or above with a light fitting with heavy weapons alternatively it's going to cost you 6 million for a level 1 fitting I never had to pay six million for my paladins. I don't think any of you should have to either, because you're looking to progress in the game, not get stuck grinding for a single item to be able to progress. So again, prices need to be looked into. Do not target your top player audience and do not put anything on the same shelf as them. These are not in any way comparable to Altarians. They are not comparable to Umbra. They are not comparable to even the Pharmacon. The only one that is comparable would be the Fury Drone. However, it's not in this list. Okay, on to the next thing, and that is armors. Well, they actually are fairly well priced for the ones that I'd recommend for the Talonite, because between the two, honestly, I would always recommend you pick up the one the lower level due to their repair value and the health value, but you actually have the superior armor, you have the blueprint armor of the energy alien Talonite armor and things like that, and those have a better repair ratio than these, and they have the built-in alien resistance, they have better health, they weigh more, naturally, but they're not, they're not tungsten. I never did like the tungsten. Whenever I used it, it was only because I didn't have Talonite at the time, and I didn't have the correct mark levels to be able to actually equip the Talonite I wanted. Resistors. They're actually the exact same price they were before, so that's actually a surprise that they jacked the, the price up on just about everything else, but left the resistors as they were good job with actually leaving those prices alone. And oh my god, what is this garbage? Seriously, a million for a Xenopulse turret. This is obsolete tech. 
Come on, guys. You know this. You know that bases need a revamp and stuff like that. Do not tell them to pay one million for something it's going to be doing mediocre damage against most of the targets it's going to be fighting. That makes no sense to me. That's unacceptable. Again, look into the pricing and consider your player base of the targeted audience. You're aiming for top tier players here. This is comparable to the prices from literally the mobilization that I finished. Look at that. In most cases, that stuff is even more expensive than the Mark II credit, the boxes, things like that. Look at that. Level 1 Nightingale drone, and the price is comparable to a level 3 Red Hawk drone. Level 1, it's... You're not even getting the same performance between the drones because they're naturally going to be stepping up in health damage for saying everything like that. These drones are for the Paladin. And they die in a single barrage from just about any tier 7A ship. So for them to be at least one third of the cost of literally a tier 7 drone, that, there's no need for that. That's just overpriced for tech that is, again, obsolete. They need it to progress in advance, not have it be locked behind a points wall. Second, you're missing the blue tail drone here, unless it's in the second strike at the... on Thursday? Yeah, on Thursday. So... I guess the primary takeaway that I have to say for all of this and... Seriously? Are you kidding me? It's cheaper to buy the base version, version of the same thing than the ship variant. Come on, guys. Okay. Let's sum this entire list up based on the Axis tech. It's overpriced for the players that are trying to progress. Definitely overpriced because I could pick this up for 300000 to pop in most of the other monthly events. You're missing a special here. There's a range boosting special for the Xeno weapons. And you're missing it. I can't even remember the name of it. If somebody has the name, go ahead and share it below. Most definitely share it below. I think it's something along the lines of a beam capacitor. And there was one for the bases. I've seen it a few times around. And it's missing from this list. And it only affected beam can and cannon weapons. And surprise, surprise, they're right here. However, unlike the weapons, they're not overpriced. They're actually fairly priced because I would happily hit two harvesters with my old tech to be able to get some of the specials for a better base defense. Had my base not already been upgraded. So it's... The price store needs to be revamped. It needs to be looked back into and specifically the pricing of items needs to be lowered Make it more reasonable for the faction that's going to be working for it. Anything Xeno Divisionist list, it looks decent. However, when you step up to the Axis, it's like stepping into a whole new damage tier, and when I made the step up between Axis and Xeno Division, well, Xeno Division and Axis, it wasn't some monstrously huge step up. I was still losing ships left and right. So, for the prices to be so vastly different between their items, that's just unnecessary. Try and base the price off of the base value that you give to the first item. So, let's just do a quick example example before I end the video. Xeno Division, the Xeno Disintegrator Cannon, to the Axis Xeno Pulse Cannon. It is over three times the price, but it is not giving you three times the damage per second. It's not giving you three times range. It's just not giving you three times the weapon speed. It's giving you Pierce, a 200 meter range increase, and a 
less than 30 damage per second increase. However, the firing cycle is different, and the Xeno Pulse Cannon actually fires more frequently than the Disintegrator Cannon, so its damage per second is actually more steady. That still doesn't equate, in my eyes, to needing a 3 times price tag. And limiting it to only 12 when people are going to be needing at least 24 for some fittings, if they're going with full heavy weapons fittings for paper cruisers. There's no need for the price. So, pleasant recommendation would be for Kicksite to actually review the prices, see what the players think, and base new prices off of it, bounce the prices off the player base, see what they think of the new prices, then implement something in between their recommendations, the player suggestions, and things like that. I'm not going to suggest anything at this point for the prices, because I'm too tired. I'd probably recommend something so low that you could sneeze and own it. Then I need to end the video because I'm losing my voice. So, my review of the revamped Alien Strike, honestly, it's looking good. Except for the prices of things. Some of the pricing is, it's wonky. And I haven't even taken a look at the targets yet. So, just looking at the prize store, it's looking like a slap to the face in some regards, and a handshake in others. Balance out some of the pricing. That's all I have to say. Other than that, the store does look good. It's well organized, as always. Tech is easy to find, and some of your tech is missing, as I said. So make sure you include it. Get it on the list somewhere, chalk it up, do something. Definitely revise these because they're, in most cases, they're not as useful as you may think. And that's going to be about it. Sum up the review, good and bad at the same time. How do you pull that off? Well, that's up to the development team to answer that one. <laughs> Everybody, I hope that for those of you that watched this entire video, you found some value in the ramblings that I have brought on. For those of you that actually are looking to advance, well, this is actually going to be much easier for you because you'll just need to farm pattern boxes, well, you'll just need to farm the boxes for the materials because you will have the patterns here, and on Thursday, yes, well, not the same one because it should be a different rotation, which I'll talk about on Thursday. But that's going to be it, everybody. Go ahead and leave your thoughts below on the revamped alien strike below. If you have any questions, possibly about fittings or anything like that, feel free to ask. I will be bringing out a tutorial fairly soon about farming for the Guardian. I just need to continue revamping the fleet because that repair time is unacceptable for such a low-level target. For such an easy target at that. And be safe out in the void, everybody. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.